How's it going, everybody? It's your boy, Wardy, and as you can see, we're back at it, not only talking about the Amazons, but also back at it talking about a player that has long been connected to the New York Mets, as the Mets has been deemed as an early favorite to land him and are targeting him as one of, if not their number one starting pitching target in the free agent market, of course, that being Yoshinobu Yamamoto, the Japanese ace that is a true phenom coming over from the MPB to take the MLB by storm, and recent reports from SNY came out today stating that, yes, the Mets are truly all in on Yamamoto, and while it's early and a lot of teams are showing interest in him the Mets again are deemed as not only a potential favorite landing spot but are also a club that has been viewing Yamamoto as a true target at the tippity top of their list of priority wise heading into this year's free agency so I want to know your initial reactions and thoughts to this news down below again if you've been following along then this shouldn't shock you by any stretch it certainly doesn't with me as a Mets fan who not only really really wants Yoshinobu Yamamoto but also understand what it takes to land him and knowing that the Mets have the certainly the resources to make it happen have a guy that they signed last year from the MPB that was simply dominant in his first year at the MLB level and Kodai Senga in which we discussed some recent co coverage as well make sure to check that out if you haven't already how Senga has been heavily advocating for his fellow countrymen in Yoshinobu Yamamoto not only to Mets front office with David Stearns and the rest of his brass but also making it known in Japan itself just how much he wants to see him in Queens so we're already on another level with, versus some other clubs in the scouting department and trying to bring him here and you love that and as you see from Yamamoto's stat line down below the guy's an absolute stud he has been taking truly baseball by storm at the Japanese level over there in MPB for the past number of years. He's at the young age of 25, just won his third version of Japan's Cy Young over there in the MPB, and his final playoff start of his MPB career is what it looks like. He was utterly dominant, truly unhittable. The guy was disgusting. His best playoff start and really went against previous starts in which he had his fair share of struggles. And people were wondering, can Yamamoto handle the big pressure, the big lights of being in playoff moments? He certainly can, and then some is what he proved in his final playoff start start his MPB career. But as I said, there are plenty of teams showing interest in Yamamoto. That includes the team across there in another borough in the Bronx and the New York Yankees. And as Andy Marchino, everyone's favorite reporter, has stated today that the Mets are not only all in on Yamamoto, but one, the Yankees have strong interest, and two, early rumblings, at least from what he's hearing with people in the know and early in the offseason, have stated that the Mets are going to have a little bit more of a trouble in landing someone like Yamamoto versus, say, the Yankees. Now, how true is that? That's something that we will soon find out and normally when it comes to updates like this I don't necessarily always go out of my way to make individual videos but Yamamoto is such a special talent that he deserves to have this discussion even if it's repetitive a lot of the times versus just mentioning it in a live show every single time because Yamamoto Otani what these guys have in common is the impact that they're going to have with whatever team they land is going to be unbelievably significant and with Yamamoto and the ceiling that he certainly has which is higher than Kodai Senga at the young age of 25 versus 35 years younger so much much to give looking for a long-term deal at the MLB level you just have to be excited about that as a baseball fan and certainly a fan of a Mets team like I am and you are probably watching this that know the Mets have a real shot at landing him now yes the Yanks you can argue they may have an advantage in the amount of times that they've watched Yamamoto this year or in years past versus a Mets team that while Steve Cohen did watch Yamamoto and this year's WBC for Team Japan as they won it all of course Billy Epler was there quite a bit as well and Epler was kind of that guy that us Mets fans were assuming would kind of help these MPB teams type discussions in which he did so well with Kodai Senga of course also brought Shohei Otani into the states with the LA Angels during his time there as GM with the Halos but now that Epler is gone David Stearns while he openly said on MLB Network the other day that he has not traveled to Japan to watch any players he has been watching more film recently and Harold basically caught him saying you know well, you're talking about Yamamoto when I wasn't even saying Yamamoto and Stearns was kind of like he got me type thing he had a smirk on his face similar to Epler in the reaction he had last year when asked about Kodai Senga do the Mets like him? What's the potential of landing him? And of course, he was bubbly. So it was kind of funny how a year in advance, it's the same exact thing, even with the different man at the helm running the show. But yes, the Yanks have scouted him plenty. They definitely would love an arm like that in their rotation. But there's also things to keep in mind that can certainly benefit the Mets here, regardless of the Yanks' global status. Because when you think of players in Japan and other countries, when you think of MLB, the first team that probably comes to their mind is the New York Yankees. It certainly is the case with a lot of players that come over from the MPB. And it isn't shocking if that's the same here with Yamamoto, but this is a Yanks team that not, needs to not only impact their offense quite a bit this offseason, already has a payroll prior to adding a one new of around 
150 plus million dollars for the upcoming season has shown a stubbornness a lack of willingness in years past to really go out and shell out the big money consistently for multiple areas of need they tend to do it at most for one but aren't doing enough in other areas and on top of that you want to see add another starter have them on a long-term big contract where you're looking at 100 plus million dollars every season that you're spending on just your rotation while the yanks certainly can do that it wouldn't shock me if they did it would at the same time be a little bit surprising knowing that this uh, this is a brian cashman a steinbrunner that has continued to make year after year more of those kind of boneheaded moves with the lack of moves that they've been doing so i'm really curious to see how they're going to go about this offseason but rest assured the mets are all in here that's been made abundantly clear what makes them stand out more than most clubs if not all clubs in baseball is the steve cohen aspect cohen has physically seen with his own eyes in person yamamoto pitch he knows what he's like firsthand stearns has certainly been doing his fair share of work and coverage on yamamoto and what he can bring at the mlb level since he came over as mets president of baseball operations this offseason but the dollars is what is going to impact a lot here along with location and of course Yamamoto's preference. At the end of the day, Mets could easily have the biggest offer on the table and say Yamamoto decides, hey, I want to go to the Bronx because I grew up a Yankees fan. I just, it feels right. That's what I want to do. Or say, hey, he wants to go out west and maybe be with the San Francisco Giants because he's closer to home and he wants to be in a warmer climate. Like there are always other factors that come into play. But when it comes to dollars, if the Mets are prioritizing Yamamoto the way that we wholeheartedly not only believe, but are physically seeing what recent reports, then you have to understand that the Mets are going to really give him an offer hopefully that he can't refuse or close to it may not start there it's going to probably be a bidding war there's going to be back and forth and we do not know exactly when Yamamoto will officially be posted yet it will be within the next week it seems we'll have around 45 days from there to sign him or not it's not going to take Yamamoto long to sign with a club it's just a matter of how long is he going to want to drag things out to kind of impact the market as if not the best then certainly one of the best starting pitchers available in this free agent market along with the Nolas the Snells the Montgomery's etc of the world that are already at the MLB level and have proven themselves, which just shows you how impressive Yamamoto has been thus far in his career to have this type of status, to have 200 plus million dollars already labeled on him before he's thrown a pitch in his MLB career is absolutely nuts. But that's the reality that we're living in when you have a special talent like him who has ridiculous velo, easily touching 99, 100 on the gun, having nasty off-speed pitches, being so consistent, so great with his command, not walking anyone, not nearly to the degree that we see with other starters, including someone like Kodai Senga, who fluctuate quite a bit with his walk rate during his time in, um, in the MPB. And while he wasn't perfect for the Mets this year with his walk rate, definitely walked some guys a lot earlier on, got in a groove, and was a borderline Cy Young pitcher for the Mets this year in his rookie year. If Kodai Senga can do that in year one, just imagine what Yoshinobu Yamamoto could do. And for a Mets team, that completely fits the bill of what they need and what Yamamoto can help bring as a guy that will not only impact you for 2024, but will for 2025, 2026, 2027, so on and so forth. The Mets want to build not only short-term, but long-term sustainable success, and Yamamoto checks off all those boxes of what you're looking for for a frontline starter in your rotation right here, right now, and for years to come, that is yet to hit his peak. That is exactly the type of guys that Stearns has loved in years past during his time with the Brewers and developing and really acquiring pitching, whether it's through the draft or or the free agent market, or of just player development and how great they do with their own internal options. But now with Steve Cohen's dollars, these resources behind him, this is a David Stearns that really feels like a kid in a candy shop that has far more ability and really luxury of being able to go out and get what he wants, what he think is, thinks is best for this team, versus his time in Milwaukee, where his hands were a lot of times tied because he wanted guys, but wasn't able to shell out the dough it would take to ultimately land them. So Mets fans, whoever you're a fan of, I want to know your initial reactions, comments down below. It really feels an or close to that Yoshinobu Yamamoto is going to land in New York. It really may just come down to which borough will be in Queens with the Mets or will be in the Bronx with the Yanks. All I know is I desperately want Yoshinobu Yamamoto for this Mets rotation for more reasons than one. And if you're a Mets fan following along, then you likely want the exact same too. So again, thank you all so much for the continued support. Stay tuned for consistent Mets coverage. We have a lot to talk about on Mets free agent and trade targets all next week long. So make sure you're chiming in for that coverage. And until then, have a great one, folks. And as always, let's go Mets, baby. Peace out.